Hello everyone, I am back. I took a long ass mental break across Christmas and the first few months of the year, whilst also focusing on my end of year exams, which may sound weird seeing that it's the start of the year, but that is how it is here. Today I have with me a watch that has been in my collection for a good few months now. This is the Pagani Design Rolex GMT Master II Homage, or more specifically an homage to the 126711CHNR Chocolat Noir Root Beer. The root beer could possibly be my favourite GMT complication watch from Rolex, an opinion that I believe I share with many other watch folk. This is closely followed by either the Black Dial Explorer 2 or the Pepsi GMT Master 2. So without further ado, let's discuss my experiences with the PD1662. The illustrious Rolex GMT Master II houses Rolex's Caliber 3285, a highly durable and actually satisfying movement. With the way it winds and sets, I had the opportunity to get hold of a 126711CHNR once, and I tell ya, the way that our hand clicks into place when you set it, it, it really can lubricate some loins. The PD1662, however, houses a DG5833 GMT movement, an affordable and mostly reliable movement with a GMT function made by a Chinese movement manufacturer. This movement is sort of hit or miss, but fortunately has had many more hits than misses. I too have a personal story with this movement that I will talk about later on. The watch is constructed of stainless steel and is decorated quite similarly to the Rolex. The lux sides are very finely mirror polished and arrive to me with no visible scratches at all. The tops of the lugs are brushed vertically and are brushed well, though I must admit, the lugs give off this rounded kind of look and the brushing makes the top surface seem like it's not actually fully flat. The watch is topped with a rose gold coloured bezel with a ceramic bezel insert with the signature root beer colours of poo brown and glossy black. Sadly, the ceramic bezel works completely differently to the Rolex GMT Master II, where the bezel is 24 hour graduated, meaning that it has 24 positions that the bezel falls into, and it is also bidirectional. On the homage, it has a very sharp sounding 120 click unidirectional bezel, similar to the one on the Rolex Submariner. The etched hours in the bezel insert are also filled rather inconsistently with a rose gold coloured pigment. Sitting in the bezel is a piece of sapphire glass with a cyclops that actually has some decent level of magnification. Sadly, this piece of sapphire and the one on the case back does not have any anti-reflective coating. The case back is a six prong styled case back designed to be opened by a case back tool. The sandblasted metal circumference of the case back is etched with the Pagani design name, stainless steel, and a water resistance rating of 100 meters. There, underneath the sapphire crystal, displays the DG5833, decorated with a custom Pagani design rotor, blue screws, and a red wheel reminiscent of the red reversing wheel on a Rolex movement. Well, even with all this cool decoration, it doesn't come close to say a good Miyota in terms of quality, but hey, I guess it costs less than literally anything that Rolex makes, though I did get one of those paper cones filled with water at the AD once, so that was really cool I guess. The movement is manufactured by Mingzhu, allegedly one of China's few large movement manufacturers. Their movements are relatively low cost and are quite commonly used in other cheap Chinese watches, like the Koju Black Bay and some of the Didan design watches. These movements being manufactured at a lower standard usually are a hit or miss, meaning that you would be receiving a watch that could either function for a few years or, unfortunately so, a few hours. But the good thing is that movement failures don't happen too often. The origins of Mingzhu, Pearl and this movement is highly unclear, but it seems like these are either produced by or are clones of Dixmont Guangzhou calibers, and are the Chinese movement manufacturer that has an unknown history. The DG5833 in the watch may actually very well not be a DG5833 GMT at all, seeing that most singular DG5833s on sale have a digital GMT wheel instead of a GMT hand, though there is a chance it could be a one-off movement produced for Pagani design, or it could actually be a 3804 movement with an actual GMT hand. Now, when I first got the watch, it did not come with a good movement. The movement required a lot of force to wind and stopped occasionally after setting the time. Thankfully, I could return it and the second time I received it, everything was perfect and it kept functioning all the way till present day around 2-3 to three months later. 
this movement ticks away at 21,600 beats per hour. It hand winds and hacks, but not very well. Hand winding the watch feels extremely rough, while the second hand can skip seconds when hacking. The GMT hand, too, can skip, but can be repositioned. This is a good thing, especially because Pagani Design doesn't seem to bother perfectly placing the GMT hand into position. The bracelet that came with this watch arrived with some small defects, some of which can be fixed very easily and disappear after use. I'm talking mainly about link movement. The center links in this watch are plated in a rose gold color, albeit not very well. There are some inconsistencies in coloring if you look closely at the bracelet. Besides that, the links themselves aren't finished extremely well, especially at the areas where links come into contact. This results in some links getting stuck when you first get the watch. This small issue slowly disappears after wearing the watch for a week or two, or one could fix it with an oil bath. The clasp that comes with this watch is kinda crap to be honest, but it does seem like most homages with a Rolex style clasp arrive with this kind of quality. The edges are slightly sharp and it feels like I'm playing with safety scissors every time I open the clasp. The moving parts feel extremely loose, but hey, what the hell does one expect for a $100 watch? At least it works, though I would pay more for a better made clasp. The dial on the 1662 is surprisingly good. A clean, glossy black surface holds 12 beautiful rose gold colored hour markers filled with cloudy white loom. The printing on the dial is actually quite crisp. This includes the logo, the wordings, and also the minute track. The hands sitting above the dial are also colored in rose gold that matches the rose gold on the case and are really, really pretty. As the second hand glides across the dial at 21,600 beats per hour, the hands and markers are highly visible and stand out from the deep black dial, making the watch extremely legible. The date wheel also features an extremely crisp font that is similar to Rolex's own font, which adds on to the readability of the time. The loom on the watch seems better than most of what Pagani Design comes up with, but I feel that this is seemingly only thanks to the size of the hour markers and not because they are actually any brighter or last longer as seen here. The loom lights up in a slightly dim blue colour with the hands being slightly brighter than the hour markers. The watch is a GMT watch, but what is a GMT function, you may ask? Many beginner enthusiasts don't actually realize how this hand works. The GMT function is a function that shows the current hour in another country of your choosing, but instead of in a 12-hour format, like in the normal hour hand, it shows the hour in a 24-hour format. Other watches may vary. This means the GMT hand only makes a full rotation across the dial once every 24 hours, whilst the regular hour hand does too. Having the convenience of two time zones on your wrist is pretty beneficial for people in professions that require travelling between two countries or professions where one has to work for a company overseas, and thus this complication has been deemed useful by many. Now, the verdict. The Pagani Design Rolex GMT Master II Root Beer Homage comes in at a low price of around $90, which honestly is pretty worth it if you ask me. For all the value that you get with this watch, it's hard to say no to it, especially if you like the Root Beer design. And plus, at such a low price, you don't really have to worry about the cost of it breaking. The only downside is returning the watch if it arrives with a crap movement, which I genuinely hope doesn't happen to you. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. Please do subscribe for more content and leave a comment and a like so my numbers can rise as quickly as grey market prices as of late. Thank you very much and have a very nice day.